Okay, um, all right, so thank you very much for coming to this week's webinar. Um, so I'm Victoria Newman, I'm a member of the Ensemble Outreach Team, and I'll be presenting today's session. So the objectives of this webinar series are to introduce you to what Ensemble is and um, to tell you what types of data you can find um, in Ensemble. And we also hope to show you where you can find those different types of data, so how you can navigate the Ensemble browser. And then um, importantly, obviously, we want um, to show you where you can find help and documentation um, so that you can start employing Ensemble in your own research. Okay. So the webinar series in all will cover seven weeks and we are at week three. So some of you will have seen um, my colleague Helen's presentation, um, just giving an introduction to Ensemble or last week's presentation with my colleague Emily, where she introduced methods for annotating um, genes and transcripts in Ensemble. Today, we're going to talk about the Biomart tool, which you can use to export data from Ensemble. Um, I'll also do next week's presentation, and then I will hand off to my colleague Ben for two weeks, and Emily will wrap up the series. So we'll start with a presentation, and I'll tell you what Biomart is and how you can use it. And then after that, we'll do a demo on the live website. Um, so I'll show you one aspect of Biomart, which is called Gene Mart. And then there will be exercises available for you um, on uh, the dedicated website that we've set up for this webinar series. So in case you have questions, we have muted all the microphones um, to preserve the sound quality. So um, please, um, uh, please ask your questions in the chat box. Um, so I'm in the room with my colleagues, Ben and Emily, and they'll be able to respond to your questions. And uh, just to mention again that there's no threading. So if um, either of them replies to you and you have a follow-up, um, please do put at Emily or at Ben in your response to make sure that they can track um, conversations. Okay, so um, on the, uh, the training site for our parent institution, the EBI, um, so at this link here, um, you can find all the, the materials from this webinar series. So you can find um, the different uh, sessions within the series in this menu that appears at the left side of the page and um, what, will, um, what will be uploaded um, uh, under this menu is uh, the recordings at, that we are um, taking of the webinar series, um, the slides, and then also um, exercises for each session and the answers to the exercises. And you can access the, the different materials um, either just through uh, the menu um, or by advancing um, using the, the little links at each side. So by this afternoon or tomorrow at the latest, um, today's presentation will be up and um, the past, the previous two presentations have already been uploaded to this site. So, we do strongly encourage you to do the exercises um, just to reinforce what you're learning and also to figure out um, how you can use Ensemble yourselves um, in your own research. So um, as you're doing the exercises, if you want to check your work or if you want to find out um, well, if you want to, to um, move past something um, where you've become stuck, um, you can look directly at the solutions that we've provided. Um, or if you'd like to discuss uh, with a group, you can join the Facebook group that we've set up um, uh, purposely um, for this webinar series. And there's more information provided at the link on the previous page. If you have more nuanced questions, um, you can also email us directly. So our address is helpdesk at ensemble.org. All right, so I'll start um, the presentation on Biomart now. So um, what is Biomart? Well, um, it's a web-based tool and it's integrated into the Ensemble browser. So it allows direct export of data from the Ensemble databases. 
Um, so we also have some APIs available that let you export data directly from our databases, bypassing the Ensemble browser. But to use the APIs, you do need to have um, some programming knowledge. So you can use Biomart in the absence of programming knowledge to um, get directly at our data. And you can build relatively customized queries with just a few clicks of your mouse, and then you can generate data tables and files that are tailored to your downstream application of choice. So when does Biomark come in handy? In essence, um, you can use it to simplify queries that might be repetitive or time consuming or just difficult with the browser. So if you have a list of things, um, so if you have a list of genes or you have a list of genetic variants or regulatory features and you want to find out roughly the same information about all of them, um, you can do that in the browser but you would have to go sequentially to the relevant page for each of the items on your list. So if you have three items on your list, no problem, but if you have 30, it might be annoying. Um, so what you can do with Biomart is you can set up a single query for your whole list and extract the data um, in bulk. So you can also use Biomart to export large amounts of data. And again, um, the idea is that you can simplify queries that would be time consuming or repetitive with the browser. So Biomart is available for both Ensemble and Ensemble Genomes. And for Ensemble, it's available for the main site. Um, so that's just the current release of Ensemble. It's also available for our dedicated GRCH37 site. And um, it's also available for um, our archived browser versions. So my colleague Helen showed you how to find um, the, the browser archives. And Biomart is enabled um, for queries of the databases belonging to um, those archives. So regarding Ensemble genomes, um, Biomart is available for Ensemble plants, Ensemble fungi, Ensemble metazoa, and Ensemble protists, but not Ensemble bacteria. And for Ensemble plants, it's available both for the main site, so the current version of Ensemble plants, and also for the Ensemble plants archive. You can find links to Biomart in the navigation bars at the top of pages in Ensemble or in the the Ensemble Genomes um, taxon-based mini sites. Or you can use URLs of this format. Um, so it's just www.ensemble.org um, for the, the current Ensemble site, um, so the, um, the current Ensemble release, and then slash Biomart slash MartView. Um, or if you are interested in one of the taxon-based um, mini sites in Ensemble Genomes, you would replace www by um, the relevant taxon, essentially. Okay, so there are four steps to setting up a query in Biomart, and the first is to select the data set that's interesting to you. The next step is to filter your data set. Um, after that, you choose attributes, and then finally you generate your results. So um, your data set is um, the actual database within Ensemble that you want to search, and it's also your species of interest. And then your filters um, narrow down your data set so that you're only searching the part of the Ensemble database that's relevant to your query rather than the whole database at once. Your attributes are the answers that you want regarding your filtered data set, and then your results are your results. However, you can generate them in tabular format or you can download sequences. Okay, so the data set, again, um, is the database within Ensemble that you want to search with your filters, and then also the species that's interesting to you. So there are three Ensemble databases that you can search. Um, there's the genes database, the variation database, and the regulation database. The variation database contains genetic variants, and the regulation database um, is uh, set up so that you can extract information on regulatory features that we have annotated. Your filters are the parameters of your query. So again, you're applying filters to your data set such that you're not searching the entire um, ensemble database. So instead of searching 
um, let's say genes on every chromosome, you might be interested in searching only genes associated with a genomic region. So one chromosome or a portion of a chromosome could be one type of filter. Or you might be interested in things that are associated with a phenotype. You might be interested only in a list of genes or transcripts, or you might be interested in entities that are associated with a particular function or some other type of gene ontology term. So those are all examples of possible filters. So you can add um, single filters to a query. Um, what happens if you want to do more complex queries? So you can define one filter. What happens if you have more than one filter? So I've drawn kind of a Venn diagram here because the answer to this question is that if you have multiple uh, filters, then you retrieve information on the intersection of these filters. So your attributes would be the answers um, that you want regarding the intersection of these filters. So an example, um, could be, um, maybe I want to search a phenotype. So in this case, my phenotype is freckles. So if I apply this phenotype as my only filter, I can retrieve information associated um, with this phenotype. Um, so I could retrieve information about every gene in the ensemble database that has been associated with this phenotype. But maybe that's not actually relevant to what I want to do. Maybe I actually only want to retrieve information about genes associated with my phenotype on one chromosome. So if I apply these two filters together, I can retrieve information on the intersection of my filters. Okay, so now your attributes are the answers that you want regarding your filtered data set. So um, if we continue with the previous example and um, we're looking for entities that are associated with a genomic region and with a phenotype, we can find gene or transcript IDs that are associated with um, those two filters, or we could find the genomic coordinates of entities that are associated with those filters. We could download the sequences of things associated with the filters, or we could find um, the, the homologs in other species or in the same species that have been associated with those filters. And then lastly, you generate your results. So you can generate most results in tabular format and you can view them um, just in the browser or you can download them in a spreadsheet. Um, if you're interested in retrieving sequence data, you can view them in the browser or download them in FASTA format. Okay. Um, and then we do have this web interface for accessing the Biomart databases, but if you are an R user, you can also use an R package to um, access the Biomart databases. So um, this package is called Biomart, um, and it's available on bioconductor.org. There's also documentation that's available. Um, so if you are an R user, you might find it more powerful, for example, um, to use this package instead of going to the web interface. All right, so before we go, um, well, we're, we're going to go across to the browser in just a second. Um, so before we go, let's, um, let's set up the question that we're actually going to look at um, in the Biomart interface. So we have a set of six Homo sapiens genes, which are listed here, and we want three pieces of information about those genes. So um, I am just going to give you a couple of seconds to think about the data set, the filters, and the attributes um, that are associated with this query, and then I'll tell you the answers. Okay, um, so um, I mentioned that um, the data set, it has two parts. So the first part is that you choose the particular database within Ensemble that you want to search, and then you also choose your species of interest. So in this case, the species is, um, is pretty obvious. Um, it's laid out here, so Homo sapiens is our species. So the database, um, now there are three databases. There's the genes database, the variation database, and the regulation database. Uh, if you haven't previously looked at them, that's a bit tricky to figure out. But in this case, we're going to use the genes database. So the filters are the, the part of the database that we want to search. 
And so in this case, it's our list of six genes. So we're not interested in the entire genes database for human. We're only interested in six genes within that database. And then the attributes, again, are um, our answers. So um, we want to find out the functions that have been associated with this list of six genes. And then we want to find out also how long the transcripts are that have been associated with these genes and the cDNA sequences of those transcripts. So again, the data set is just the gene set and then Homo sapiens. Um, the filters are our list of six gene names. The attributes, um, so there are three attributes again, and then we'll generate results. Okay, so I'm just going to exit my presentation. And um, what I'll do actually is just copy this list of genes, whoops. Okay, and um, then I will take you over to the browser, which is here. Um, so again, there's a link to Biomart from this navigation bar at the top of uh, pages in the browser. So I'll just click on it to load Biomart. And so what you can see is that it's already prompting us um, to select our data set. So there's a drop down menu here to choose the database. So um, we've got this list of options here. So there's the Ensemble Genes database, so Genes 88. Um, we've got the Mouse Strains database, the Variation database, the Regulation database, and um, then this Vega option. So 88 refers to the current version of Ensemble. We're on E88 at the moment. Um, Mouse Strains is like a special version of GeneMart, uh, which has um, uh, sequence assemblies for uh, genome sequence assemblies for um, multiple different strains of mouse. And then Vega is um, uh, it's the set of um, manually annotated genes. So for our particular query, we're interested in just um, plain gene mart. So I'll go ahead and choose that. So then next, we're prompted to select our species of interest. Um, so what you can see here is a list of all uh, the species that have reference genome assemblies in um, Ensemble. And next to the name of the species, there's the particular assembly version um, that we have in GeneMart at the moment. Uh, so we have our sort of um, most searched species up here, and then there's a list of all species here. So again, we're interested in human, and it tells us um, the genome assembly version for human. Okay, so now that I've selected that, I'm being prompted to choose my filters and my attributes. And you can see that a couple of attributes um, are already predefined. So Biomart will, um, will pre-fill uh, some choices for you. Okay. Um, so now I've clicked on filters and I have uh, seven different types of filters that have come up as options. So again, I can filter on things like a genomic region, um, I can filter on a set of genes, I can filter on phenotypes, um, on gene ontology terms like um, biological process or molecular function or cellular, cellular component. Um, and then I can also do mappings uh, to orthologs or paralogs as we mentioned. And then there are a couple of other options here um, to look for things associated with particular protein domains um, and also to look for particular variant categories. So um, you will be given in the exercises um, the, the option to browse more of these filter categories. So again, I, I strongly encourage you to check out the exercises. So we'll just expand gene here. Okay. So in Gene here, um, we have this option, Input External References ID List. And so um, I am just going to paste what I've copied over from the presentation into this box. Um, and I'll take out AND because AND is not a gene name. Um, so at the moment, um, Biomart thinks that I have pasted in a list of ensemble IDs. And you can see the format for these ensemble gene IDs here. And um, I have not, in fact, pasted in ensemble IDs, as you can see. So I'll just um, expand this menu and I can select gene names. Um, so you can, um, as you see, this is quite a, a long menu. So there are many different types of IDs that are acceptable in this box. If you're not entirely sure what type of IDs you have, um, there is 
um, a sample given next to each um, each category. So um, just have a look through the, the list of IDs to see what it is you're inputting um, in. Okay, so um, now I, um, uh, I've uh, input uh, a list of six genes and I've told Biomart that I've input um, gene names. Um, Biomart has gone ahead and uh, applied this filter so you can now see um, that the filter is showing up at left here. So um, what I want to do now is I want to make sure that Biomart actually knows that I put in a list of six. So I can use this count function up here. Um, so if you don't return the expected number of items when you count, uh, your formatting might be off, or it could just be that you have input something that is not in the current Biomart database. Okay. So now if I count, um, it's being a bit slow. It's being uncharacteristically slow. Um, okay, here we go. Right, so um, it finds uh, that I have in fact input a list of six genes. So my query um, is formatted correctly, so I can um, move on to the attributes then. All right, so um, we wanted to find um, the transcripts associated with our list of six genes and more specifically their lengths. We wanted to find the Go terms that have been associated with this list and we also wanted to download um, the cDNA sequences for um, the transcripts associated with these six genes. So what you can see is that there are six categories of attributes up here. Um, but there are radio buttons to select each of them, so you can only um, you can only retrieve one type of attributes in a single query. And as you can see, um, sequences is over here, so we already know that we'll have to retrieve attributes twice so that we can get our cDNA sequences in one query and the other information in another query. So um, we can expand gene here. And um, so gene stable ID and transcript stable ID have been pre-selected for us. So I am going to unselect transcript stable ID. I'm going to select gene name and I'm going to reselect transcript stable ID. Um, so this is because the output table will be generated with columns in the order of how the attributes appear here. Um, so, um, uh, the attributes uh, will be, well, the, the results will be output in the order in which I select the attributes in essence. So I'm just ordering um, the output table as I sort of go around um, unselecting and reselecting. Okay, so um, I'm going to um, generate first a column for the ensemble um, gene stable ID, then the gene name. Um, so I've selected gene names specifically because this helps me to match my output to my input. Um, and then I'll have a column for the transcript stable ID. The next thing I'm going to do is select the transcript length. And then the last thing that I want is the go terms that have been associated um, with um, my set of transcripts. So um, the Gene Ontology Consortium is external to Ensemble, so I can find that information by expanding external. And um, so here I'll just go ahead and click go term accession, go term name, and go term definition. And you can see that there are many other um, there are many other options here. So if, for example, you want to map a list of um, gene names or ensemble gene identifiers to corresponding identifiers in other databases, you could do that by choosing options here. Okay. So at this point, um, I have now set up my query to uh, retrieve um, information on my first two attributes. So I can just go ahead and generate the results. And so the results button is here. So what's happening here is that a preview of my results is being generated. So we're only going to see the first 10 rows of um, the results table. So we had a list of six genes that we input. However, um, we're not going to um, output a, a table with only um, six rows plus a, a header row um, because each of these genes um, 
has um, multiple transcripts associated with it. Um, so uh, as Emily explained to you last week, um, our annotation process builds gene models that incorporate um, the transcript models for which we have biological evidence. And um, so um, in, in most cases, um, I would say, uh, genes will have multiple transcripts associated with them. So it helps always to have the transcript stable ID represented in your output so that you can distinguish um, between um, the, the evidence that's associated with one transcript of a gene and the evidence associated with another transcript of a gene. Um, and then each of these transcripts will also have multiple gene ontology terms um, associated with it. So each of the, the terms has an accession number, um, a name, which is uh, sort of the, the layman's language um, representing the accession number, and then the definition associated with the term and the accession number. And um, so again, you will generate, um, you'll generate uh, multiple rows, um, one for each transcript associated with a gene, but then you'll generate um, rows for each transcript if you have um, different go terms associated with those transcripts. So this means that the results table um, as a whole is quite large. So um, to see the whole thing, you can go um, here to click view all. And um, so now the full results table will load in a separate window. Um, so while that's loading, I'll just show you um, that you can export your results directly to a spreadsheet. So you have different options here. Um, and if you're running a particularly large job, um, you can just ask to be notified by email when it's done. So if you choose this option, you can enter your email address here and we don't record these email addresses. It will be used just a single time um, for Biomart to contact you. Uh, so what's useful about this option is that um, if your connection to the server is broken, um, Biomart can still keep running your job in the background and can simply notify you when your job is complete. Okay, so the results table has loaded. And um, so it's a pretty massive table, again, representing the go terms that are associated with each transcript associated with each of the six genes in um, our list. And um, I would argue that probably if you wanted to work with this further, you would just go ahead and download a spreadsheet. So um, now you know how to do that with these options here. All right. So um, we also want to, um, to access um, the cDNA sequences that have been associated with our list of six genes. And um, we don't need to go back and redefine the filtered data set. We can simply change the attributes. So if we just scroll back to the top, um, we can uh, go out of features and we can choose sequences instead. Okay, so if we just expand sequences, um, so uh, peptide sequence is pre-selected uh, by default, and you can see this little image here. Um, so the red highlights are showing you what it is that you're going um, to download, essentially, and um, we are interested in cDNA sequences, so just watch the image as I click cDNA. Um, so you can see that it's changed slightly. Um, so uh, when we have peptide sequences, um, the coding exons are highlighted. And when we go to cDNA sequences, um, the non-coding exons um, are also uh, highlighted. So this would be five prime and three prime UTR. So if you're not entirely sure what type of sequence you want, um, you can just press the buttons here and you can see how the image changes and then adjust accordingly. Um, if you would also like flanking sequence, you can just add in 200 or 500 um, nucleotides of upstream or downstream flank, and that will then be included in, um, uh, in your results. Okay, so we've chosen cDNA sequences. And now I'm just going to adjust the header information. So again, as a default, the gene stable ID has been selected and so has the transcript stable ID. So I will also just add in gene name um, to make the results a bit more intuitive. And um, so again, this query will be retrieving the sequence um, in FASTA format of each transcript associated with my list of six genes. So I can just generate the results again. 
And again, this will load just a, a preview um, of the results. So um, if I want to download um, all the results, um, again, I can ask Biomart to download a FASTA uh, file. OK, so um, now we're viewing the preview in FASTA format. So we have the ensemble gene ID, the ensemble transcript ID, and then we have the gene name for each of the sequences that's been retrieved. And if we want to view all in the browser, um, once again, we can come here to all and, <clears throat> excuse me, and then they will load um, in the background um, in this next tab. So now we have um, the full list of um, uh, cDNA sequences for each transcript associated um, with our list of genes. Okay, um, so that is the end of the demo. So, um, so just um, to mention to you again that um, the exercises are um, on the course page, um, but if you're interested in more um, help and documentation, um, you can find <clears throat> online course information at this link, and we do also have tutorials in the Ensemble browser. Um, we have both YouTube and Youku channels um, that have a series of help videos uh, just to explain different, um, uh, different aspects of Ensemble data and how to um, access them. And so we encourage you to check them out. Um, they're typically only a few minutes long. Um, so there's something that you can dip into and out of um, quite easily. Um, if you want to contact us um, with any questions, then please do reach out to us at helpdesk at ensemble.org. And you can also subscribe to um, Ensemble public mailing lists. So dev at ensemble.org um, is uh, the developer's mailing list. And if you have um, quite sort of complex and technical queries, um, that mailing list is a good place to send them to and announce will just um, give you uh, updates on what's going on. Um, please, has a, uh, please don't hesitate um, to follow us on Facebook um, or on Twitter if you want to um, keep up to date with what we're doing. And you can also reach um, out to us on our blog. You can follow us on our blog um, to find out um, more about releases and um, new developments. Um, if you use Ensemble, please do cite us. Um, so please always uh, cite the most recent um, Ensemble paper. And we also have um, a couple of uh, resources. So these are essentially um, methods, uh, methods articles that show you how to find different types of data in Ensemble. And um, all of these are open access as well. So um, with that, I'd just like to thank uh, the entire Ensemble group, which as you can see um, is uh, pretty large. Um, and I'd also like to thank our generous funders on whose support we rely. Um, and that concludes my presentation. <laughs>